the development economy study program, faculty of economics and business at Dumbury University. The obtained an accreditation on 20th of June 2007. This shows that the Development Economic Study Program has competitive advantage as a national study program and has international potential. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. The Development Economic Study Program of the Economy and Business University of Denver. That will become an excellent study program and the development of the Prometa Economy and Agro Industry at the international level. And so, uh, Development Economic Study Program has curriculum list diet. Diet is the digital economy and agro industry. The development economy study program with its superior potential as one of the recipients of the Ministry of Education, which is formulated in the development of economic learning outcomes in line with the IQF and level six qualifications, which are actualized in the independent campus curriculum based on OBE or outcome based innovation, standardized achievement based PIES. Furthermore, it increases student interest coupled with acceptance of orange students from Thailand. For students' school activities, increase student academic and international level. What do you have The 2013 agenda for sustainable development, or SDGs, is a new development agreement that promotes shift towards sustainable development based on human rights and equity to promote social, economic, and environmental development. Well, for your question. So basically, the generations that is coming very popular is a game of sin. SDGs or TPP are implemented with universal integrations and inclusive principle to ensure that no one will be left behind. There are three concentrations that a student could choose based on the interest and expertise. It is human research economies, regional economics and agribusiness, and also monetary economies. Also provides learning infrastructure that has been developed and maintained with an environmental perspective by prioritizing comfort, safety, and security that include in the Green Campus Program. It is also provides access for students with special needs. Adequate facilities and infrastructures are provided for students of Development Economy Study Programs, such as 38 lecture rooms with large and medium capacities, computer laboratories for econometrics and entrepreneurships, and banking training rooms equipped with data analysis tools such as UPUs, Stata, and SPSS, or Statistical Product and Service Solutions, followed by supporting facilities in the form of reference books or research journals, both in the physical and online world, and equipped internet connections and scientific publication institutions for students and lecturers' publications. The Development Economic Study Program always tries to provide welfare for students, both mentally and physically, by getting health and 
Medical Center to Union. That is critical. There is an organization that allows students to participate for upgrading organizational support. And we call it Student Association of the Department of Economics or the community of the Development Economic Study Program has used an integrated information system, or we call it SISTER, and also faculty of economic and business website and Development Economic Study Program's website. Each level has their own website, email services with university domain, and cloud system. Students can access international literature in the form of e book and web beautiful articles according to each student's scientific field by science direct, a journal, and e book springer in the university library, Cambridge Journal, and e journal.
Oh, no, Oke, okay, ready? Satu, dua, tiga. Action. Oh, so you can. Attention, please. Silence because this event will be getting five minutes later. And so all participants that attending by Zoom, open your camera and use the Zoom virtual background. Thank you.
including to all participants. Welcome to the Global Classroom Sales World 2023, with the subject being Natural Resources, Economics, and Environmental. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Assalamu Kebajikan Prahayu. Before we start the event, we would like to say the Economic Study Program at ABUNESH International Thailand. Bringing green economics better. Please stand for a moment to all participants. Once again. Dear Honorable, the Dean of Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Jabal, Professor Dr. Istipada, FSICRICMA. Dear Honorable, the Dean of Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. Professor Dr. Prasad Abid Abdul Rahim. Dear Honorable, Mr. Dr. Herman Chahyo, as the lecturer of the Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Chile. Dear Honorable, Ms. Abri Rewan, as the lecturer of the Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Malaysia, Farah. And we are very proud all of the participants who have joined this event today. <laughs> Firstly, we would like to say the utmost gratitude towards God for letting to us gather today's event with good and stable of health. Hereby, I, Imelda Diaz Samidri, will be the master of ceremony of today's event. We get you until the end of this event. All right. We would like to read out the rundown of today's event, which is divided into several parts. The first, opening. Second, welcome speech. The third, certificate summation to all speakers. The fourth, reading the speaker's CD. The fifth, lecture learning. The sixth, question and answer session. And last, documentation and closing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this event read by Basmala together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next agenda is opening speech will be delivered by Professor Dr. President Abdul Abdurrahim at the Dean of Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. Dear Professor Dr. Rajat Dhanabin Abdurrahim, the time is yours. Dr. Istifada, the Dean of the Faculty. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alamin. As-salamu alaykum wa wa muslim. Sadina Muhammad, Wala Ali Sadina Muhammad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
and good afternoon to everyone, especially to Professor Dr. Istifada, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, University of the Arts, Denver. And I'm uh, Dr. Rosa, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business from uh, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. I would like to apologize that I couldn't join um, the session for today due to some technical reasons. So, Alhamdulillah, we are here today to listen to our honorable speaker, Ms. Audrey Levan from UNIMAS and Mr. Herman from UNICEF Senpai. Ladies and gentlemen, all the students and all the participants, it is indeed our pleasure and privilege. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And good afternoon to everyone, especially to Professor Dr. Istifada, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, University of the Arts, Denver. And I'm uh, Dr. Rosa, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business from uh, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. I would like to apologize that I couldn't join um, the session for today due to some technical reasons. So, Alhamdulillah, we are here today to listen to our honorable speaker, Ms. Audrey Levan from UNIMAS and Mr. Herman from UNICEF Senpai. Ladies and gentlemen, all the students and all the participants, it is indeed our pleasure and privilege uh, to to give this open learning mark on the uh, stations of global classroom um, global classroom series one development economies organized by group of the faculty uh, from minima as well as unista Denver. this um, series the seminar is dedicated uh, to to offer a platform to discuss on the interaction between the natural resource economic as well as the environment to serve as the as the milestone or the significance whereby we have the responsibility, we bring our responsibility towards the sustainable um, environment. So we are here today uh, to explore further the interaction between economic forces and the delicate ecosystem that sustain our environment. In a world where we use uh, the widely use of natural resources, it cannot be separated from the environmental sustainability. Hence, this seminar is very important to all of us. The decision that we made regarding the research, resource allocation, the consumption pattern, as well as the policy, the economic policies with regard to the resource, not only we confine in our economies um, at the locally as well as at the global level, it will remark um, our contribution to the health of our environment. Natural economics, natural economics, natural resource economics, it can be analyzed in terms of a the first one, allocation. The second one, utilization. And the third one, the distribution of resources within the economy. However, this perspective, it has to be broadened to incorporate the environmental consequences of our decision in terms of allocation, in terms of utilization, and in terms of the distribution of economic resources. So as we go along to explore the nexus, the relationship between the natural resource economics and environment, I would like to encourage all of you to take part, to participate, to share your views, to share your perspectives, and to engage in the discussion of this natural resource economics and the environmental sustainability. It becomes our responsibility to bridge these two things, the natural resource economics and the environmental Sustainability. I am confident that by exchanging ideas, 
and the synthesize our knowledge, we can aim for the balance between this natural resource economy and the environmental sustainability. So on behalf of Faculty of Economics and Business, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to everyone, to the speakers, to the panelists, uh, to my uh, colleagues uh, at Mr. Uh, Jemba, especially to Paul, um, the Dean of the uh, Faculty. So hopefully, I'm, 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 very, I'm very looking forward for, for collaboration in the near future so that we can realize our understanding, our agreement in depend depend our understanding on the on the subject matter as well as to contribute to the sustainable environment. So thank you and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for your special opening speech. We are very sorry that our team, the Faculty of Economic and Business University of Japan, has the time on duty work. So she cannot attend here today, but she was very grateful as for this event. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is a certificate formation. The committee please transcribe the certificate. The word certificate of my the two minutes of real one. And the next. Mr. Dr. Herman Chamiodiato. To all participants, please give them a round of applause. All right, please return the first attitude. Thank you very much. Before we start the lecture learning session, let us read out the rest of our principal video of speaker for the committee. Please help us to share screen the curriculum today. The first speaker is Ms. Liwan Audrey. She is a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Economic and Business University, Malaysia, Tarawa. She has ongoing academic qualification on Doctor of Philosophy, Environmental Economic University of Malaya. She has many awards. The uses is then the 10th International Body of Business Conference, Best Paper Award, Environmental Institute. A mitigation model based on information communication technology coaching September 2022. She has many other publications and research scripts. The next curriculum video from our last speaker is Mr. Herman Jankyo. He is a head of Development Economic Study Program, Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Japan. This is his educa educational history in the New is Doctor of Economics at the Brahmijaya University with the Kumlaut Award. He has many experience of research and community service. He has an award from President of Indonesia that is Sadia Lanjana Karya Satyaten. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let's start the global classroom. Please welcome Ms. Audrey Liwan and Mr. Herman Chapio. The first speaker is Ms. Audrey Liwan. Dear Ms. Audrey Liwan, the time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, to our MC. All right, before that, can you hear me? Is it clear on your side? Yes. Okay, uh, Okay. all right. So, uh, again, a very good morning to everyone. Uh, selamat pagi. 
uh, especially to our uh, university partner in uh, Indonesia. Yeah, uh, I would say thank you. And I'm very delighted to have the opportunity to share. Uh, it's a kind of uh, knowledge sharing. I'm not an expert, but uh, yeah, but we can learn together uh, the knowledge under the natural resource and economics and environment. Once again, thank you to the Dr. Hermans, yeah, to the deans of the faculty, uh, and also our colleagues and friends at the Chamber University. Okay, all right. So let me share the slide. Okay, uh, uh, okay, I would like to check whether the slide is clear. Is it okay, right, Dr. Herman? Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, all right. So, uh, I'm uh actually I'm I'm not really feeling well. Yeah, I having some uh sore throat uh, problem. So maybe my voice is not clear enough. Uh yeah, but again, uh, we go together. Yeah, on the topics of uh evaluations of natural resource and environment, and I given uh fifteen minutes. Yeah, to share the uh, uh, uh some uh knowledge or the discussions under the topics of evaluation of natural resource and environment or of uh, environment. All right, so I given a selected topics yeah under the environmental uh, economics yeah. All right. So uh, before that uh we knowing that uh, there is some interesting facts yeah that we actually we share the same planet yeah. Uh, when we're talking about the environmental economics, when we talk about uh, resources, right? Uh, for me, it's a kind of interesting because everyone, uh, we share the same planet, yeah? Unless we are an alien, yeah? Maybe you are living in the other parts of our planet, yeah? So even though are you living or you are located in Malaysia or Earth, like uh, in Sarawak, and for, for our friends in Chamber of University in Indonesia, but still we are having some similarity that we are sharing uh, or living in the same planet, yeah? Uh, or we sharing or we living in the world. So on top of that, another interesting fact that we share the common resources, right? Even though we are uh, located at different kinds of uh, locations. All right, so class, so I believe that uh, you already uh, know about several concepts under the environmental economics, like uh, common goods, yeah, uh, like public goods, uh, private goods. Yeah. Uh, we know that the fact that we said that yeah, our friends from Indonesia come to Malaysia, for example, for vacations or for or, or for any other purpose, of course, we actually sharing the common resource. Yeah, as you can see, uh, in my slide, yeah, like example, a river, the Greenland, yeah, and also our common resource like fishing activity. Uh, we know that that is uh, some of the similarity uh, between us that we are sharing the uh, natural resources. All right, so before that, yeah, uh, can uh, our participant here uh, give your opinions? Yeah, what is the meaning of the common resource? Yeah, I need your feedback and uh, give your definitions of the common resources. And please uh, write your response in the chat room. Yeah, I give you around one minute. Yeah, is it okay? Okay, we give a response in the chat room. 
Okay, what is the definitions of the common resources? And write the definitions in our uh, chat room. Yeah? Okay, I need your feedback, whether you're from Unimas or you're from University of Jemba. Okay, anyone? Okay, anyone from uh, Unimas? Okay, all right. We have a uh, response in the chat room. All right, what is the uh, common resource? Okay, resource can be used for everyone. Yeah, uh, some say that a uh, common resource is a resource that is available to everyone and provide the benefit to the users. Okay, and yeah, you can uh, continue the discussions in the chat room. All right, thank you for your okay. response. Okay, and yeah, uh, in the economics context, yeah, we have the definitions of the common resource, and there are two uh, main characteristics of a common sea. Yeah, it's a referring to the inability to exclude others from using the resource. Yeah, or everyone can have a free accessibility to that particular resource. Yeah, we cannot uh, prevent someone from using that particular uh, resources. All right, and the second one, uh, the characteristic is a uh, rivalry. Yeah, uh, it's referring to the uh, uh, Common resource is a rival good, yeah, because let's say one person uses the resource and over the time, uh, over the time, we can see the levels of the resources will be uh, reduced or uh, depletions in the resources. All right, so that is the, uh, the key characteristic of the uh, common resources, which is uh, normally we relate it to the uh, environmental uh, good and services. All right. All right. So, so before we go into the uh, uh, value in the environment, yeah, let we look at the uh, the the uh, the roles of the economics uh, principle concept uh, in the context of uh, environment and natural resource studies. All right. So in the economics, yeah, uh, we know the central issue. Is about the scarcity of the resources, or I might say that uh, in the economic study we uh, try to understand yeah how do we managing uh, in terms of limited resources. If we relate it into the uh, uh, the the market value, uh, uh, probably we we want to manage a certain amount of income, for example. And we have uh, many ones, yeah, but we have limited of resources. So the economics yeah, is the study or the sign of management of the material, uh, whether at the individual uh, level, a community, or we can go to the a macro uh, view, uh, for example, at the uh, country uh, level. Yeah, so we're looking at the how do we manage our resources, yeah? So the resource, it can be come from uh, other forms of resources. We are not limited to, to the monetary, but also we look at our environment. Yeah? Also, is the importance as our resources. Yeah? And as we can see here, uh, the definitions of the environment yeah? uh, is referring to the, uh, to the uh, surrounding conditions that are uh, influencing the, uh, the growth as well as our developments, yeah, as we can see uh, in the context of uh, macro uh, context. Yeah? So environment also 
uh, can be defined as the uh, all flora and the fauna, yeah. Uh, whether it's uh, non species, uh, for example, like the the uh, the plant, the animals, yeah, and the aquatic ecosystem, energy and material resources, as well as the our atmosphere. Okay, so that will be the definitions of uh environment. So we look into uh, uh the role of economics and environment. Yeah, we can see there is a linkage between economics and environment yeah or in other words we would say that uh, economics and environment actually is a complement with each other yeah and the economics we always discuss about the production we always discuss about the the uh, uh, the consumptions yeah but in the environment context yeah uh, environment actually has tremendous value to the humanity yeah for example it provides the basic material inputs for our economy. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, also environments. Yeah. Provide us the ecological services. For example, it provides the clean air, water, and flood uh, protection. Yeah. So we can relate it, and we can see the link between economic and environment. So meaning to say that in the economic analysis, we cannot neglect. Yeah. We cannot exclude the value of our environment of course is something that uh, intangible yeah we cannot see it directly physically but of course it support yeah it's a, a complement to our economic activity yeah all right so i hope that uh, uh, you understand yeah the link between the economics and the environment all right so there is some uh, main principle yeah for the environmental economics yeah uh, from the uh, economics uh, concept, we relate it in terms of environmental externalities. Yeah. Uh, also, we have the common property and the public goods and uh, optimal management of natural resource over time, as well as the economic relations of environmental goods and services. Yeah. And uh, the following uh, topic, I will uh, discuss about the uh, relations of environment goods and uh, services. All right, so uh, we go briefly, yeah, uh, in the economic system, uh, when we learn about the uh, microeconomics, yeah, uh, we always know what is the the the, the flow uh, models of the economic system, yeah. This is in the conventional economics uh, uh, system. All right, so we can see the 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 flow of the economic activity from the uh, firm level to the household. Yeah, and we have the uh, market of uh, factor of productions, yeah, somewhere here, and we have the market for goods and services. But again, in the context of the uh, environmental, yeah, uh, because we need give the value to our environments, yeah, uh, we have there is some another, uh, I would say that a difference, uh, understanding, uh, to, uh. To support yeah the the, the uh, uh, our economic understanding and we have expanded circular flow models yeah by include the ecological uh, uh, economics in our uh, conventional economics analysis yeah we can see that our circular flow model is kinds of uh, include the other uh, factors which I think is a very important yeah as you can see here. Uh, it's consisted like uh, renewable energy, yeah, as well as the non-renewable renewable energy resources, yeah. And we can see that by expand the circular flow model, I would say that we can estimate the value of the another uh, factor beside the market transaction itself, yeah. So, uh, expand the circular flow model is more uh, relevant, yeah as we see the, in the context of the uh, uh, macro uh, level. All right, so that is the uh, some uh, important uh, concept and principle uh, from the uh, conventional uh, economics. All right, so now we move to the uh, evaluations of natural resource and environment, or I would say the evaluations of natural resource and environment. Yeah, We try to give the value to our environment. 
All right. So, uh, there is several uh, questions here. All right. Or uh, the importance uh, questions that you, you can think of. Yeah. For example, like uh, what a different type of the economic value. And uh, the second one, yeah, uh, there are several techniques. Yeah. The economists use to estimate the value of the environment. Yeah. And the uh, natural resource in the monetary uh, term. Yeah. Because we know that uh, environmental or our resources, yeah, we cannot get the value directly, yeah. Uh, but we need to find a technique, yeah, how we can put the value to our intangible uh, goods or something that surrounded us that not counted in the uh, market transactions, yeah. Uh, I just go briefly later on on a different type of the technique that the economies use to estimate the value of the environment and natural resources. All right, so before that... Uh, huh? Okay, so is it clear on your side so far? Is it, I go too, too fast. Everyone okay, right? Boleh ya? Okay, alright. So we move to the uh, the the different type of the economic value. Alright. So before that, yeah, uh, we going to see what is the difference uh of value economic value from the uh environmental economics understanding. Yeah as well as the uh, understanding from the ecological uh, economics and non-economies. Yeah? Uh, ecological economics or non-economies is more to the interdiscipline yeah? uh, kinds of the understanding. All right, as you can see here uh, from the environmental economic, or, or I would say that from the traditional economic analysis, yeah? uh, in the standard economic theory, uh, nature has value only because humans uh, ascribe some value to it. Yeah, uh, in the economics uh, theory, uh, we only give the value based on the certain value, uh, based on certain value uh, that can uh, given by our uh, surrounding. For example, okay, it's a very direct value. All right. So on top of that, based on this view. Species do not have inheritance right to exist. Yeah, uh, for example, uh, no one has an inheritance right to the clean uh, air. For example, and uh, I would say that in the traditional economics, yeah, we actually uh, only counted or our our center is focusing on the humans uh, uh kinds of value. Yeah. Side that we not really acknowledge in the estimating of our economic uh, value. And on the other hand, yeah, of course, opposite to the uh, economic analysis, yeah, we have some uh, mm -hmm. other opinions, yeah, from the other, other the uh, uh, interdiscipline kinds of opinions, or uh, we put it here ecological, ecological economics and non economics, yeah. So there is some argument here, yeah. They introduce the right best notion of value. Okay, uh, the non-human species may have an inheritance right goes beyond the human-centered or anthropocentric uh, worldview. Yeah, and under the ecological economics, uh, uh, what we call that uh, discussions. Yeah, the most fundamental source of value uh, derived from the ecosystem functioning. Yeah and not only be limited by the human perceptions or in other words yeah from the ecological economics uh it more uh, i would say that the understanding of the total economic value not only we're looking at the direct value but also we need to consider another uh value that uh provided by our uh surrounding yeah or our ecosystem even though we cannot uh, uh, directly see that particular service.
services, but we gain the benefit from this particular uh, good and services that provided by our ecosystem. All right, so that is the uh, difference opinions, yeah. Uh, and we uh, include, yeah, the argument here, yeah, we can see from the both uh, opinions, yeah, we can look at the environmental economics context as well as the ecological economics understanding on the total economic value. All right, so we know that uh, for the environment, yeah, the transactions is not directly. Uh, the value is not di directly we can obtain in the market transactions. All right, so we have call it as a non market uh, benefits. Yeah, all right, so what is the uh, meaning of the non market benefits? Yeah, here is referring to the benefits that not obtained from the goods and services sold in the market, something that we cannot. Uh, uh, give the value directly, yeah, but we have the benefit from uh from it, yeah. All right, so here, uh, in the 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 in the non market benefit estimate, yeah, in our uh, environmental economics uh, estimations, okay, we have uh several procedure in estimate the non market benefits, yeah, and uh the first procedure here. Uh, we as the economists, yeah, uh, believe that in order to make a valid comparison, we first need to quantify all this benefit using a common metric, yeah. All right, so I would say that in measuring our non-market uh, value or the market uh, uh, value here uh, with regard to our environment, we need to convert it into a standard uh, unit yeah so we can measure it later on by using a common metric okay and after that the standard metric normally used by the economy is some monetary unit yeah uh, normally we use the uh, the monetary unit on a, a similar a standard yeah and the economic value okay uh, from the economic perspective yeah uh, the economic value is obtained from a specific resources where we define as the need or uh, willingness to pay. Or, or, or in other words, uh, if you still remember, uh, willingness to pay is referring to the uh, maximum amount of money are people willing to pay for goods or services that increase their well-being. Yeah? So in the economics context, uh, we're going to see how people willing to pay for a certain environmental, uh, probably a uh, quality, and uh, on top of that, the willingness to pay, yeah, uh, I already given the definition just now, yeah, willingness to pay is referring to the amount of people are willing to pay for goods and services that increase our uh well-being, yeah. All right, so we know that many non-market goods yeah as i mentioned just now there is no direct uh, price yeah that must be paid to receive the benefit yeah uh, i give some scenario uh, here okay for example yeah, let's say someone living in the polluted city yeah are uh, willing to pay to the uh, around two dollar per year for improvement in the air quality for example yeah so the 200 dollar per year represent the economic benefit they would obtain with the cleaner air. Yeah? So we will using the concept of the consumer as uh, surplus. All right, in principle, the aggregate willingness to pay of all residents yeah, in the city could be uh, weighed again the cost of the cleaner air to determine if the policy to reduce the air pollution will make economic sense. Yeah? Uh, in this context, for example, let's say, uh, the people in the city, yeah, they have a certain amount, yeah, they are willing to pay in order to improve the air quality. After we total off the uh, uh, willingness to pay of the uh, people in this community, and we going to uh, uh, compare it with the cost of the cleaner air, and we can see whether it created the consumer as surplus, yeah. 
the benefit that gained by the uh, this particular community let's say all right so on top of the willingness in the situation whereby a policy would decrease the environmental benefit link to accept in compensation for these changes yeah I have a policy yeah and this policy probably uh, is not the positive one yeah it created the pollution for example yeah so in contrast to the willingness to pay yeah uh, we are uh, examine yeah what is the willingness to accept okay from the uh, people's willingness to accept is referring to the uh, the minimum yeah the minimum amounts of money people would would accept as a compensation yeah in the actions that particular policy will reduce their well-being yeah so that is the uh, meanings of the uh, willingness to accept so uh, from the economics uh, context we are using the uh, the, the the approach of willingness to pay yeah and the willingness to accept in uh, valuing the environmental all right so before we go into the uh, different types or technique or how do we evaluate our environment yeah the type of the environmental uh, value yeah or the environmental value yeah so the economies have uh, developed a classification scheme to describe the various type of uh, value we place on our uh, environment yeah all right so we categorize is here okay basically under this uh, classification yeah, we have been categorized by the economies we have a uh, a value that classified as either use value or non use value okay so use value here okay is referring to the value the people place on tangible or physical benefit of goods and services yeah whereby the non use value uh, is referring to the value that people obtain uh, without actually using that particular resource yeah maybe we have some benefit in terms of uh, uh, satisfactions or psychological yeah and uh, later on we're going to see a different type of uh, a non-use value and use value all right so under the use value yeah okay so we have a uh, main classifications here uh, use of the environmental value we have use value and non-use value and use value uh, we relate to something that tangible benefit that we physically observe yeah uh, for example let's say uh, when we visit to uh, certain places like natural park or forest or lake yeah we can uh, enjoy the beautiful view yeah or also is related to the pleasure yeah of any individual get when using or consuming consuming good or services all right so that is the uh, use value and uh, under the use value we have uh, several type of uh, use value okay as you can see here uh, under the use value we have direct use value okay it's referring to the value that individual obtain uh, directly uh, for example using the natural resource yeah and also for example uh, the activity of harvesting a tree okay something that we can directly gain something benefits from that particular uh, resources yeah for example uh, we also like uh, drilling well okay also giving the direct value and let's say uh, you are doing like a diving activity, uh, doing the snorkeling activity, or you are doing the breeze walk in a natural park, for, for example, national park, is can uh, categorize under the direct uh, use value. All right, so uh, the second one, uh, 
indirect use value yeah uh, is referring to the our ecosystem uh, benefit that are not value in the market yeah okay it's not something direct but this particular value actually supporting a human being yeah in the context of uh, it can prevent the flood prevention yeah the natural functions of the our uh, ecosystem and uh, the third one we do have the ecosystem services yeah we can see indirect use value and the ecosystem services they have uh, i would say similarity in terms of the functions yeah or uh, we can say they have uh, naturally functions of nature yeah and uh, for example like the uh, water uh, purification yeah and the other uh, functions of uh, ecosystem that can protect yeah or can benefit or give benefits yeah that can support the uh, human being yeah all right so that is a different part of the use uh, value okay so under the non use value all right so the non use value are derived from the intangible well being benefit that we obtain from the environment yeah uh, i think this is the a bit difficult yeah when we uh, try to get the value that come from the non use uh, uh, kinds of value and uh, for the non-use value is uh, referring to the intrinsic value of the environmental uh, asset. Yeah? Uh, intrinsic value is referring to the sense of belonging uh, naturally. Yeah? So these benefits are in the form of psychological. Yeah? Uh, like, for example, uh, some of us probably, we, we, we really appreciate uh, uh, some of our historical sites, yeah, and also some of us maybe we all all uh, very appreciate some of a uh, different type of species, like uh in Borneo, yeah, we are very popular with the orangutan, for example. I believe that our friend in Indonesia also know about the orangutan, yeah. So we have certain of the intrinsic value, yeah, yeah. That is we can categorize under the. Uh, non-use uh, value all right so under the non-use value okay uh, we have option value yeah uh, option value uh, is referring to the amount that people are willing to pay to preserve the resources yeah because they may not wish to use it in the future yeah uh, they are looking forward that that particular uh, 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 what we call resources still option value and the second one we have bequest value yeah bequest value is the value that people place on the knowledge that the resources will be available for the future uh, generation yeah and the third one existing value yeah the value are people place on resource that do not intend to use to ever use yeah or I would say that uh, under the existing value uh, is referring to the uh, someone that are willing to pay yeah, for the preservation of any uh, natural resources. Yeah? Uh, for example, let's say in Malaysia or Indonesia, yeah, even though we don't have the opportunity to visit that uh, natural park, for example, but we appreciate the existence of that particular natural national park, yeah, and we are willing to pay or we are willing to contribute, okay, or uh to 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 preserve that particular uh, natural uh, uh resources or the national park, yeah. Uh, I would give the the example. Let's say uh if if you notice that uh there is a NGO we call as a worldwide fund, yeah. WWF, yeah. Uh, sometimes they are looking for donations, yeah, uh, to preserve a certain uh, uh, preservation for a certain species, for example. Yeah, even though we not obtain direct value from that particular uh, species, for example, we appreciate it and are willing to contribute amount of money, yeah, in to make sure the existence of that particular uh, species, yeah. So that we can relate to this uh, existing value under the non use our value. All right. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, to summarize it, yeah, what is the uh, economic value? Uh, is the combinations of uh, both use and non-use value, yeah? The total economic value is consistent, yeah? The value of resources by considering both use and non-use value, yeah? Or I would say that in estimating the environment, yeah, we can consider this both value, yeah? Which is use and non-use uh, value. All right, so... In the figure 6.1, yeah, it's a summary or the component of the total economic value, yeah. In our uh, uh, environment, yeah, it's good if we can uh, giving the assessment based on this total economic value, yeah. Uh, we have to include the use value as well as the we consider the non-use value, yeah, to make it more kinds of uh, a good uh, measurement, yeah. Uh, in regard to the total uh, economics uh, value. All right, so I hope that I still in uh in the time frame here. Yeah? All right, so the last topic will be the uh, uh overview of environmental valuation technique. Yeah, uh, I just go briefly on a different yeah type of the technique that we can use to measure the environment yeah or our natural uh, resources something we cannot obtain uh, directly in the market transaction all right so uh i only discuss technique okay the first one is a market uh, valuations yeah all right so uh, market valuations uh, uh something is uh, a direct uh, valuations yeah uh, like what we always do in our economic uh, classes, yeah, we estimate the willingness to pay, willingness to accept, yeah. Uh, on top of that, we are going to uh, determine what is the consumer uh, surplus and the producer surplus. In the economic, also we know the economic surplus is the uh, combinations of consumer and the producer surplus, yeah. And under the market valuations uh, technique, yeah, uh. We can use the direct or the uh, existing value that available in the market, yeah, yeah. By uh, give given the example here, like our forest, yeah, our forest probably can give the direct uh a product like our timber, yeah, and also we can so directly give the value for a uh, fishing a uh, stock, for example. Uh, for our oil, for example, that we're drilling under the ground, uh, at the ground, and that is a uh, uh, market valuation, something that we can get the value uh, directly. Yeah, uh. so we are going and measure it by calculate is meeting the consumer and the producer are surplus. Yeah, and the economists later on can calculate the benefit of these resources as a market, uh, commodity. Yeah, that is the direct use value. Yeah, that will be uh. Uh, under the market of valuations. All right, and the second one, uh, we have another technique. Yeah, the cost of illness method, yeah. Uh, normally, the cost of illness method uh, is referring to a prod uh, for valuing the negative impacts of the pollutions, yeah. Uh, where we can uh, give the value, yeah, by measuring the cost of uh, treating the illnesses. All right, I can relate it uh, 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 a common uh, example. Let's say uh, in Malaysia yeah, and also in Indonesia, I believe that uh, everyone has experienced the health problem. Yeah? The air pollution that happen every year, yeah? except uh, during our COVID time. All right, so yeah. The has problem, for example, yeah, we can get a sickness from this uh, a polluted uh, environment, yeah. So we can measure the negative impact of the pollutions by measuring the cost of treating our illness, yeah, or the medical cost. All right, so here we can uh, get the cost here through the direct cost, yeah. For example, we can include the medical cost, yeah. The cost of uh, 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 office visit and the medications, yeah, 
paid by any individual. Yeah, or also the direct cost is uh, referring to the loss in wages due to the illness. Yeah, so under the direct cost, we can include medical cost as well as uh, the, the cost of our uh, salary job on a certain day. Yeah, so we uh, lost some of our uh, salary or wages yeah, due to the illness. Okay, that is uh, the, under the direct cost. And the second one, indirect cost, yeah. Uh, let's say we get sick, yeah, due to the uh, polluted environment, yeah. Uh, of course, we cannot uh, perform our works as usual, yeah. So we have a decrease in the human capitals, yeah. Uh, the, the productivity has been uh, uh, reduced, yeah. And also, for example, some of uh, the kid, for example, some of you maybe you get sick due to the health problem, yeah. So you cannot attend your lecture, yeah. So this is another indirect cause, yeah, due to this uh, polluted environment, yeah. So that is the second technique that we can consider when we estimate the environment, all right. So the third one uh, is a replacement cost method, or oh? Or we, we can say that uh, replacement or substitution, yeah. Uh, replacement cost method is referring to the approach to measure the environmental damages, yeah. That them that uh, estimate the cost of necessary to restore or replace the restore uh, the resources, yeah. Uh, replacement or in other words, we can say restoring, yeah. I give a simple example, yeah. Uh, for example, we using a fertilizer. Okay, to restore the swell fertility. Okay, so we need another kinds of uh, resources to replace it, the original uh, swell. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, another example. Uh, let's say, uh, happen the 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 uh, uh, the the well spill on the roads. Yeah. So we need the restoration kind of, of work. Yeah. Okay. To to clear or to clean up the mess. Yeah. Uh, due to the uh, environmental damages, yeah. So this approach consider the cost of actions that the provide human met substitute for the loss of the ecosystems services. Yeah, we want to restore our ecosystem services, even though we cannot back to the original uh, uh, improvement. Yeah, so we can uh, measure the damages. Yeah, by uh, Take the value of the cost of a replacement, yeah. And another example, yeah, a community could construct a water treatment plant, yeah. Uh, let's say in your community you are having the water, uh, pollutions, and the community, uh, consider that we go for the water treatment plant, yeah, in order to improve the the quality of the water. And we can take the cost of the treatment plant as our uh, uh, estimating value for the damaging of our uh, resources. All right, so that is this the replacement uh, cost uh, method. All right, so the next one, another technique that we can consider, uh, we call as the reveal preferred method. Yeah, reveal preferred method is referring to the indirectly in the value that people place on environmental goods or services based on the market uh, decisions. Yeah? And under the review preferred method, uh, we have three most common uh, preferred methods. Yeah? The first one, a travel cost uh, model. And the second one, hydronic pricing. And the third one, the defensive expenditure. Uh, yeah under the uh, reveal preference uh, method. Okay, under the travel cost method, yeah, uh, as you can see here, is a statistic analysis uh, to determine, yeah, how much the people willing to pay in order to visit the natural resources, yeah. For this technique, normally we take the market transaction, yeah. Okay, for example, uh, we want to give the value to a certain natural park. Yeah, of course, we cannot have direct value. So we can use a travel cost model to 
to estimate the value of that particular uh, national park. Yeah. So we can use the statistic analysis. And uh, through the travel cost model, yeah, we are going to uh, conduct a survey. Yeah, how much the people spend for the travel cost in order to uh, uh, go and visit that uh, national park. Yeah? For example, uh, we can include the transportation cost. Let's say uh, our friend in Indonesia would like come to Sarawak, for example, because you want to visit the Mulu Cave or the Nia Cave, yeah? one of the historical sites yeah? in, in, in Sarawak. Yeah? So we have a different value. Okay, and how we estimate it, we can use the travel cost model, yeah? We include how much do you spend for your trip from Indonesia to Sarawak, for example, yeah? Transportation cost, like the uh, aeroplane, yeah? And also uh, the land transportation, yeah? So we put it under transportation cost and plus the excess cost. For example, like how much do we pay uh, for the fees to enter into that uh, national park, yeah? So we get the willingness to pay best on the this particular cost, like transportation cost and the excess cost, yeah. Of course, different people, individual, they have a different cost, yeah. Because someone might come from far or might be someone come from the uh, Sarawak itself, yeah. So, but uh, in order to measure okay, the value of that resource, for example, we can consider the travel cost model, yeah. And the travel cost model later on with this one will be based on the uh, demand curve. All right. So the uh, another method we call as the hydronic pricing. Yeah. So the hydronic pricing will use the property as the our uh, indicator proxy. Yeah. To our environmental. Uh, uh, I would say the the value of our environment. Yeah. So under the hydronic pricing, yeah, normally we're looking at the uh, 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 certain criteria as of the house, yeah. We're looking at the number of the room, yeah. Uh, probably we are looking of the uh, assessment accessibility to the other facilities, yeah. And also we look at the air quality, yeah. For the hydronic pricing, normally we consider under other uh, non-economic factor as a constant yeah but we only looking on the comparison on the environmental quality yeah or we call as the a quality for example all right so another value for our environment we can use the property value yeah but we have certain requirement yeah we have to make sure the non-environmental uh, factors is a constant yeah we only doing some comparison between the environmental uh, value. All right, so I give another example. Yeah, let's say uh, if you have the opportunity to stay at any resort, for example, or you stay at the hotel. Yeah, we have a different rate of room. Yeah, uh, that is the common example. Let's say if you choose the room that facing to the to to the river kinds of view, for example. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, the price of that room might be uh, will be expensive if we compare to the room that facing to the uh, car park, for example. Yeah, so that is the 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 uh, uh, comparison of the environment. Yeah. So can you use the hydronic uh, uh, pricing uh, method? All right. So the second, uh, the third one, okay, under the reveal of, uh, uh, under the defensive expenditure household, yeah? or in other words, it's different. So uh, the, the defensive expenditure approach collect data on the actual expenditure to obtain yeah, the willingness to pay for the environmental quality a uh, change yeah under the defensive expenditure approach is referring to the expenditure yeah that we willing to spend in order to mitigate the the the, the uh, environmental uh kinds of uh pollutions yeah so 
let's for example, if let's say in your house you have a water uh filter, for example, yeah, or maybe in your house you have the 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 uh, other machine that can uh improve the the air quality in the house. Yeah, it can be used. Yeah, in order to measuring the the quality of the environment, we can use that particular uh mitigations uh course. Yeah, in our uh in our environmental Alright, so so the last one, uh, we have another method. Okay, so basically the stated preferred method economic valuations, yeah, it based on the survey response, uh, which is uh, depend on the hypothetical scenario, yeah. Under the stated preferred method, uh, normally we use the contingent valuations, yeah. Uh, so under the contingent violations, we given a certain scenario to our respondent, yeah, and uh, they will set the preference uh, during our uh, interview. All right. So under the 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 set preference method, we have the contingent uh, violation technique, yeah. Uh, to summarize it, yeah, under this uh, technique. We use the economic tool, yeah. Also, we are going to estimate what is the willingness to pay for a good, yeah. For example, uh, we we ask the people about the preservations of hiking opportunity or air quality, yeah. So we give the 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 hypothetical on to our respondent, yeah. For example, uh, the preservations of the hiking opportunity or something that uh related to our uh, environmental good and services yeah from our interview later on yeah we can decide yeah what is the willingness to pay and what is the willingness to accept yeah after we conduct a survey uh, to our respondent and toward the end we want to measure the value of the asset yeah which is uh, referred to the average willingness to pay yeah uh, multiplied by the number of person who benefit the environmental uh, asset yeah so that is basically uh, some of the methods that we can consider when it comes to the evaluating our uh, and uh, uh, evaluation technique here normally we as ground yeah and we design the question a uh, based on our uh, objective of our study. All right, so yeah, that should be uh, several techniques uh, of the environmental evaluations yeah, that we can uh, consider in, in regard to valuing our environment. Yeah. So a uh, class, this will be the uh, reference okay, of our uh, discussion today. Yeah, you can uh, find it later on, the uh, detail of our uh, main reference. Yeah. All right. So before I end our my my sessions, yeah, I just give some example, uh, on the fieldwork for environmental and natural resource evaluation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been involved in several uh fieldwork study in Sarawak. Yeah. We are measuring the value of the uh resources. Yeah. Where we have go to the ground, we interview the farmer. Yeah. How much? this area will uh, come with the benefits to them yeah okay that will be uh, uh my last uh field work yeah in the 2018 and also uh i've been involved in the data collections on the social economics yeah we go to the long houses and we get the uh, opinions from the uh, uh from the villagers all right so also we conduct a survey on the paddy farming yeah we are evaluating the the uh, uh the agriculture sector uh, uh, roles in the our economic contributions. Yeah, we also go to the ground and do the interview, uh, conduct interview uh, with the farmers. Yeah, all right. So this um example. Yeah, when come to the evaluating the uh, resources. Yeah, another experience I have involved. Yeah, uh, in Barrio, uh, in Sarawak. Yeah, we uh go to the uh, the salt spring in Barrio. Yeah, we we try to uh yeah interview the local peoples on how they they uh, uh can generate the income from the resources yeah as well how they can conserve the 
uh, these natural resources. All right, there is some uh, uh, some of the field work that I've been uh, involved, yeah, particularly in in Malaysia. Okay, all right. So uh, that's all for me. Um, thank you, Andre. Um, maybe Yeah, uh, that's all from me. Okay, over to you, uh, to our MC. Okay, and uh, first question is Natalia. Oh, is uh, next question. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, just one uh, out student in question for this outbreak. Please, time for you, Mr. Nata. Mr. Nata. Thank you. Uh, okay, first of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, say thank you to the Master of Sanagoni for the opportunity that we've given. Uh, so thank you to Mrs. Audrey uh, of, for the, uh, the material that have you given today. So I want to ask about your skill that you have been presentation in your PPT. In your PPT is uh, your presentation about the direct use value, value and indirect use value. So I have a uh, question about the material. The first one is, I want to know how does direct use feel different from indirect value when considering ecosystem benefit? And the second question is, what is the use uh, direct use value from ecosystem service in the terms of the economic assessment? Am I audible, uh, Mr. Audrey? Mrs. Audrey? I think I can't uh, get the questions in the chat room, right? Okay, Miss Audrey, thank you. Okay, I want to ask, all right, about use value. I want to know how does the direct use value uh, differ from the indirect value when considering the ecosystem benefit and what <laughs> the, the difference of our honor. What difference? Economics, services in terms of uh, the economic. Also, uh, Natalia, yeah, uh, your question that I want to ask about the use value, and we and I want to know how does the direct use value differ from indirect uh value, uh when considering the ecosystem benefits, yeah, uh, I think uh. So, you are referring to the direct value, right? Uh, because I am a bit uh confused. Uh, indirect value from indirect use. All right. So, uh, direct use value is something being that particular natural resources. Yeah. For example, let's say, uh, we're talking about the forestry. Yeah. So the direct uh, value that we can obtain from our forestry area, for example, like uh, harvesting the tree, yeah, whereby we can produce it later on uh, to another uh, product. Yeah? So the direct use value is something that we can use directly and we obtain the benefit from it. Yeah? If we are talking about the forestry, we can relate it with the uh, logging, harvesting activity, and after that we can... Uh, produce the uh, uh, timber and the other uh, products that come from the timber-based product. That is the direct value. And other things that I can relate to the direct value, for example, uh, if you go and visit uh, 
to any national park, for example, yeah, uh, and we can obtain some uh, happiness or any satisfaction from our uh, bridge walk activity or enjoying the the uh, uh, environment. Yeah, that is the direct uh, value okay, of our resources. We buy the indirect use value. Yeah, is uh, referring to the uh, eco ecosystem benefits. Yeah. Uh, ecosystem benefit they are not value in the markets yeah uh, for example we know uh, uh, the function of e uh, ecosystem for example it can give the function to prevent the flooding for example or uh, our ecosystem the role of it also can become a pollution uh, absorption yeah so that is the meaning of indirect use value yeah uh, in other words, I would say that our ecosystem is important. We they have important roles in supporting the human being. Yeah, but that particular value we cannot get directly in the market. Yeah, but actually they have that is an indirect use value. All right. Okay, so uh, I. Uh, the, your... uh, okay, let me give you a okay. Uh, thank you for your answer. So let me uh, give you one more feedback. So uh, this on your explanation, can I say that direct use value is them about is them with public goods and direct use value is them with private goods like this. Okay, di direct good is uh, actually something that. Uh, we can see it's tangible, something we can obtain directly, the benefit out of it. Yeah, that is the direct value. Something we can benefit directly from our resources. For example, just now, we are talking about our forestry. We can harvest the tree so we can produce the timber-based product. Or else we are doing the snorkeling activity, we are doing the diving activity. Or probably we, we can doing the drilling uh, well activity. So we can get the direct value, the benefits from our resources. Yeah? That is the direct value. Yeah, something that we can directly, yeah, uh, can obtain the, the benefits from our surrounding, from the resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the second question, maybe, and also in the participant in role in joining too in uh student in uh postgraduate uh technical magister of economics uh who is uh any question uh uh MBA any question for Michael Green no okay uh. Aubrey, uh, Ms. Aubrey, uh, the participant in global, the first global task work in every uh, uh, November uh, or and, and maybe we must uh, join to in uh, three participants from Thailand, yeah, uh, from Thailand in the uh, University of Sri Mangala. Uh, and so, uh, thank you for uh, collaboration in uh, global task work, the first building. Uh, okay. Uh, and the the second speaker, uh, from me, uh, MC. Oh. Yes, Mister. Yes, Mister. Okay. Yes, Mr. Okay. Okay. Audrey, uh, the thank you very much. Uh, uh Kevin Up is uh, uh, exploring in the. Okay. Topic uh, our student, uh, our uh, our post uh, economics economics official in uh, economic journal and this of this subject. Uh, I am uh, introduced uh, introducing my name is uh, Dr. Herman as a, a coordinator uh, study. Uh, development economic study program for the economy and business university in Jember. And so, uh, this matter uh, is a uh, complement uh, give, uh, has a uh, given give, uh, is uh, with outlay. And so, uh, the topic, uh, the topic or uh, material 
the first uh, the first uh, global room uh, is all in basically economics, ecology, and environmental relationship and human position in nature. Also, uh, uh, we 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 learning in economic science is uh, is the same in uh, ecology, humanity, and uh, economics driven. How the position? Uh, in in the other in the other in the circular economics in the in activity economic uh, we we can in the, this topic uh, everyone in the economic side uh, three to five in the uh, uh, economic side and the first is uh, economics theory so uh, it, the main is Economics analysis. The second report in economic science is the descriptive economics. And the last, uh, the report from economic science is applied economics. This applied economics is supposed in economics and natural resources and environmental. And so, this uh, structure, structurally in economic science, and to economic resources. And this, uh, how in descriptive economy? Descriptive economy is uh, uh, ex explorated, explorated in uh, performance economics in Indonesia, Malaysia, and the region, and uh, maybe the region in Asia Pacific, Africa, and what with GO, and WTO, and the other. This is explained in descriptive economics. And so, uh, I, I was in studying in public economics, must be learned in macroeconomics and, and microeconomics. Uh, my official, my development economic study program uh, and uh, our student in run macroeconomic and microeconomic in uh, semester one uh, uh, under semester four. And so the economic nature success uh, in semester three. And so, uh, everyone uh, must be uh, deeply learning, uh, positioning, causalities, and economic theory, descriptive economy, and applied economics. The means, uh, the means is uh, applied economy without, without uh, but learn microeconomics. Tanpa memahami mikroekonomi, kita tidak akan pernah bisa belajar ekonomi sumber daya alam. The one condition must be we have must be learn economics micro. This is a fundamental learning in economic natural resources. Next slide. Next, how oh, information, economics, ecology, and economics. Economics, ecology, and economics uh, come from the same words with occur. Occur is uh, household regulation, household governance. Tata kelola memenuhi kebutuhan rumah tangga. Um, this is uh, the same word is uh, obvious and enormous. Uh, the problem in economy in uh, environmental so the uh, so the in uh, the situation uh, material is is not enough to obvious enormous. Jadi ketika rumah tangga tidak bisa memenuhi kebutuhannya, pasti akan menimbulkan sebuah persoalan. Termasuk di sini adalah kebutuhan sumber daya alam. 
What happened? The myth is ecology. Ecology is the society of all of living things. The study of the reciprocal relationship between the living thing and the other neighbor and the sorting in this object. Ini menjadi dasar bahwa pemahaman ekologi menjadi sebuah prioritas untuk dipahami bersama-sama. Ya. 